Oh, excellent. Well, Simon Squibb, ladies and gentlemen, we have got a, um, well, somebody which, when I saw your TikToks, I was like, holy moly, I've got to get this guy on the podcast. And in fact, let me tell you, Simon, this is our first official podcast. Right. So, wow. I'm on. Yeah. yeah. Cheers. This is, on. this is Mace, is, is Chris Mace, but we call him Mace. All right. Um, and uh, how many people you got watching on your TikTok at the moment? I, I just put the live button on now, so two. You got two. Uh, there's but fifty-four thousand you... people online. I've got four hundred thousand plus followers, so I'm, I'm sure we'll uh, we'll build that up in the next that's, half minute. Mate, that's pretty damn good. How how quickly did you get that many followers on TikTok? In a year. Nice. That's good. Yeah. No, and it's it's been a hobby for me, and I've enjoyed interacting with the TikTok community, and I've actually made friends with quite a few people on there too, which has kind of surprised me. Social media feels so anti-social, doesn't it? It but does. Your real world friends uh, be, being on the platform, kind of fascinating. Yeah, well, the thing is, like, I, I followed you when I, I think I saw, I saw your video, liked it, and then um, a day later, I saw another video. I was like, one thing that like resonated with you, I just thought you're just quite humble and quite a, what comes across like a normal guy. I mean, behind mm. closed doors, you might be a psycho. But... I, I am, <laughs> but, but I, I do think I'm a normal person. I don't, I don't, I don't think I'm anything special. Yeah, but it uh, probably but... comes down to your, your, you know, growing up, wouldn't it? You know, you just, uh, you, you said you were on the streets. Yeah, well, I, I um, at 15 years old, uh, my mother kicked me out of home, and and so uh, what did you my do? father. Uh, <laughs> will be two different versions of this story of course um but but you know that um, sadly my father had died uh three weeks before suddenly of a heart attack oh, and i think my mother and, and me were, probably, were just going through quite a lot of emotion and i was 15 years old and had hormones already yeah and literally my mom said to me that line that we probably all heard as from a parent which is you do it my way or you take the highway uh, and i and i said i'll take the highway and she said right and she got all my stuff and she chucked it out the window jesus uh, well, I've done that once, mate, and then came back when I was hungry. <laughs> well, yeah, I think, I think to be honest, I, I, uh, my mother is is still alive today. I, I don't like my mother, and and in a way, I knew that it was actually the right thing to get away from her way of thinking, her 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 style, and actually, I, I'm quite stubborn. Yeah. And 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 something happened to me when I when I got kicked out. I, I always call it like my entrepreneurial muscle woke up. Yeah. Something just woke up in me, and and for the first time in my life, I was able to ask, "What am I meant to be doing?" And 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 I didn't look back really. I picked up that stuff from the floor, and and I and I went forward. Um, it wasn't easy, but I, that I, I never looked back. And and now I look back at that time as a as a good moment in my life, not not a bad moment, as strange as that might sound. Yeah. yeah. So what? You're still in sort of no contact with your mum or anything? But I'm going too deep. I mean, no, I I tried many times to rekindle our relationship when yeah. I met my now wife. Um, it's quite important, you know, that, that your partner meets your family, and yeah. and so she's very close to her mum. So she wanted to meet my mum, and I didn't want to be a weirdo. So yeah. I took her to meet my mum, and it took probably about six months for her to realise my wife, now wife, to realise what I know about my mum. And and so you know, but at first it's like here's my mum, and yeah, 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 friends, and I, you know, that we try to reconnect, and then slowly, um, both of our old ways kick back in and, and we just we just don't get on she she we think oh, differently sorry no, that, yeah mate. oh it's like it's it's probably the looking back on it it's the best thing that ever happened to you well it, it is one of those things that i think i don't know if other people struggle with it but i i feel like there is an element of like that they're your family so somehow you should get on exactly it's, you know what i know exactly what you mean it doesn't, exactly it doesn't what you mean. translate into the real world if you know yourself and you have, like, for example, I, I know this is going to sound bad, but I, I, I'm married to a Chinese girl. I've got a son. He's half Chinese. And my mother is racist. Right. You know, oh, like, God. she literally said yeah, to my mother, well, does it? Simon should not marry her. Um, oh, no. It will not be pure children. Oh, yeah, wow. Right? Wow. Think about that. You know, I've got yeah. I've got a son who I love, like, I, unconditionally yeah. so and my mum looks at him as if he's, you know, uh, the incorrect creation, you know, like. Oh, and oh so that's like, terrible, mate. That's, that's uh, deep. Anyway, just being honest, you know, it's, yeah. it's but something my, I'm proud of. 
but it, it's a difficult one. Yeah, but my um, my wife's Venezuelan, mm. so like, but so to 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 think of me introducing my wife to my mum and my dad and mm. things like that, you know, and for them to come back and say something like that, it'd be like that'd be horrible, wouldn't it? I and, yeah, like, I can't yeah, imagine that. I can't imagine. And for your poor wife as well. Yeah, I mean, it's it's um, that's not the only story. Yeah, uh, and I think it's it's just you come to a point where I I crave close relationships, mm. and I and I value them. The older I get, the harder they are to make, as well as we all know. So I really value you know, like that that closeness that that family should bring you, and and I I just I just feel sad that you know that's part of money can't buy fixing that problem um and, and so in fact money makes it worse believe it or not well i was uh, and- funny you're going to say that actually because i was going to ask you this <clears throat> because like i said just before we sort of like um we cut just to have a little sort of like a little chat beforehand um i wanted to know more so i mean i'm in, i'm intrigued about your businesses and things like that but i'm really more intrigued about how going from having literally nothing to quite easily say you could probably have anything you want. Pretty much. What, I couldn't have know. Twitter, by the way. I'd have to. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Those things. Um, you, you mentioned about friends. Do you find it now, do you get a little bit paranoid, a little bit sort of edgy when you're uh, meeting new people? Like, as in, do they want to know me because of what I've got or what I can give as opposed to actually me as a person? Mm. Uh, no, I don't feel that. No? No, uh, I know I always I'm a big fan of President Obama. And uh, he once said, uh, you know, the day he became president, he, he doesn't feel he ever made another f- real friend after that. Right. You know, I, I, I haven't felt that I, I always take everybody on, um, you know, face value and, mm. and develop a relationship over time. Uh, I think that life is about trading. You know, I, I love my wife. My wife loves me. But if I didn't treat my wife well, she wouldn't love me for long. Yeah. You know, there is there is a, a a a process in any relationship. Money plays a part in that in that process. Yeah. But I, I don't I don't ever feel I've never felt that someone's being friends with me for money. Mm. Uh, and I don't I don't, I, I I feel like that it's part of life that I I for example like to pay for lunch when I go out with people. Yeah. Because I've got money or I haven't got money, I've always been that way. Mm. And so, see, um, that's another that's another thing as well. Because you think if I, especially in your position, if I don't pay, people think I'm going to be a stingy little fucker. <laughs> if I do pay, you know, it's all oh, look at him flaunting it about. Yeah, yeah. So, so you just that's why I say for me, I go back to who I am naturally. Yeah. And and without money, when I had nothing, I still used to always want to pay. That's a good yeah. way. Otherwise, you go mental. Thinking yeah. about it yeah, all the time. I, I have to just be true to yourself, mate, and just that's it. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So I, I feel, I feel like that, that's my money does, in my view, only makes you happy if you're already happy. Mm, and it, yeah, if, it's, if you're unhappy, it enhances things. If you're happy, it enhances things. Mm. But it doesn't. It doesn't. In most cases, actually change who you are. Um, it might allow you to pretend to be something else, but in reality, you are who you are. I think with or without money. Yeah. Mm. The, the reason I ask that is because um, since my YouTube channel sort of blew up, you know, um, w- over time where I've been had more time to be out and about and, you know, going to the gym, for example, and things like that, you know, there, there's sometimes when I meet new people and they say to me, um, uh, I don't know, do you want to go out or, you know, cover your number or whatever? And some of it, and sometimes, believe it or not, they say, I'm not asking just because you're a YouTuber. <laughs> You know, it is strange how people can almost have to defend themselves and say, I'm not asking just because, because I know what some people are like. They, they want to speak to you and get to know you because of X, Y, and Z. Mm. And I just think that with you, it could have been to the extreme, you know, but mm. it's good that you're, you, you know, you're humble and you just, you know, you pick, you pick the, your friends you've got really well, yeah. clearly. I would say um, I don't have many friends. If I'm if I'm being honest about it, mm. I, I have lived all over the world, and and it actually has made it quite hard to have consistent friends. So I've lived in Hong Kong for twenty years, on and off Shanghai, Beijing, Bali. Wow. Uh, lived in the UK for twenty years, but you know I've I've always I've always worked, and yeah. so um, you know I have a close circle. My wife is my best friend, um, and I've I've got three other 
friends in my life. So I don't have a big, a big circle. Yeah. That being said, you know, I, I do lately through social media, as I mentioned earlier, I've, I've been, I've had more time for friendship because yeah. I'm, I'm working as hard as I used to. Right. Uh, and so sometimes with work, I haven't had time to, to make a lot of friends, but now uh, I do have money. I do have time. I do have time to invest in friendships because friendships is about spending time with people and, and, and giving up time for people. And I've always valued time as, yeah. as, as I don't have a lot of. I heard that in your TikToks <clears throat> um, when you said money buys your time. That's what it, that's what it gets you. And that, yeah, it's the only, that it's the only value it gets you. Yeah. What was that? Sorry, Simon? Money, in my view, people spend money on things like a property or a car. Yeah. They're, they're wasting their money. Um, the only thing you should spend money on is buying yourself time. Yeah. yeah. It's, so so, true. it's so true, mate, because we all just chase, like, I work and I have no time, you know. Time is hard. And I'm the same as you. I've got family. Love your family. Um, mm. It is really difficult. And if you want to be successful, then you have to give something up. And usually that, that is family time. Mm, because yeah. you're constantly working so it is it's hard it is hard it is hard and, and i think it's something that you have to accept um i have uh, uh my best friend um when he got married the weekend he decided to get married was one of the biggest activities for my business um i basically have a i had a big event business and we had a credit swiss conference at this weekend and and it's worth tens of millions to to my business i had to be at that event for that weekend and not his wedding oh no really? and, and those sorts of decisions are you know they're not talked about i guess on the journey to success yeah they're hard decisions i'm you sure know, you'd understand though simon 10 minutes but it was not an easy one no, and, no. and actually this is really maybe a bit bad but he got divorced and I have to say I was happy. <laughs> so I never liked, I never liked personally married, yeah. uh, but that's not why I didn't go. No. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and so every time he talk about his wedding, I feel bad because he's my friend. Yeah. And he always understood. He never judged me. He never made me feel bad for it, mm. but I felt bad for it. that I'd had to make that decision because it sounds it. like I picked money over him, which wasn't the case. Yeah, it was literally, yeah make my business work yeah and now i get to spend a lot of time with him because i i worked so hard back then that i'm able to enjoy my time now and yeah. um, so i bought time back then i would imagine as well it's not just 10 million it's also a knock-on effect to everybody else who's working for you and around well you. yeah I mean, at that, that particular time uh, i had a company called fluid i had 60 people working for me if that event had gone wrong i would have had to fire everyone wow I saw that. Uh, yeah. What can you tell me a little bit about fluid? Is that something that you used to have? Is it now yours? Is it what? what, what? Yeah. So that's a company I built in Hong Kong. It yeah. became the largest independent agency in Hong Kong and I sold it to Price Waterhouse Cooper and I started it from my living room with my now wife. No, uh, no way, mate. How? My first employee <laughs> lived, lived in my apartment while we built it. And, uh, and yeah, so it, 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 it one of those things, but it, it took, 15 years to go from zero to, to selling to PricewaterhouseCooper. But it was one of those businesses, frankly, I enjoyed it. When I sold it, I thought selling a company was like the dream. Mm. And actually, again, um, most of my friends worked in that company because that's the people I spent time with. Right. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I sold my family and oh, I had a, a real strange process. Initially, excitement because the money dropped in the bank and you're like, wow, this is amazing. What a story. I've sold my company. Yeah. And at six months, it felt that felt great. And then slowly, I started to feel lonely. I started to feel like I didn't have any you know, identity anymore because I was always Simon that built Fluid. My purpose. And, and, you know, I had this, you could come to my office and see my legitimacy, you know, because this is what we do. And, you know, we had big ideas and we were able to make them happen. And suddenly I, I didn't have any of that. Mm. I'd sold all of that. And all I had was cash, which is pretty boring. Cash is pretty boring. Um, and, and so, yeah, yeah it's yeah, uh, right for you to say that, yeah, Simon. There's this, there's this thing, Simon. <laughs> no, I know, I know. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. It's, uh, but in reality, I guess I'm just, it, it, it is actually, cash is boring. Unless, okay, you can spend it and make it interesting. Mm. Yeah. But what, what can you spend it on? You can have, spend it on a, a Ferrari yeah. and drive that around for a while, which I've done. And then after a while, about takes about three weeks, and you start saying, "Oh, this car needs to service, or this car got scratched. I need to get that fixed, or this car's yeah, it's got down in value, isn't it?" And if you've worked hard to build your money up, you know, it doesn't matter how much you got, you can't help but feel that. Mm. Next thing you know, this bloody thing owns you. Yeah, 
Yeah. You know, you're, you're working to keep it alive. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it doesn't matter. And then I'm putting it up as a picture of me, me in front of it as if suddenly that's my identity. That's not a good identity. I don't want to be, that's yeah. not who I am. You know, so so yeah, so I think and uh, yeah, I, I got rid of the, those things um, because I don't I don't want them to own me, mm. uh, and they don't buy you time. They take up your time. I'm the only one insured on the f- bloody thing, so I have to drive, <laughs> <laughs> and I have to wait three hours while they fix it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not buying time. I'm working for that bloody car. How many yeah. cars have you got? Are you into cars? <laughs> well, I've got twenty three cars. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I was just watching a thing about Ronaldo saying he's got twenty four cars. I, I that's a lot. of shit i don't i don't yeah, want yeah, well, if you're into them or I mean, not, it? It, to be fair if you're a, if you're a collector and that's something like you know some people collect stamps yeah you know yeah. you've got like his amount of money not many know. people collect stamps mate do you know what funny you should say that because <laughs> when i was in the post office the other day yeah. i know steve in there right and i asked him i said do people still collect post uh, post stamps he yeah. says you'll be surprised people <laughs> it's a, quite an expensive game now so thank you very much sorry oh, fair one <laughs> Um, but I want to just take me back a little bit, right? So um, when you left your home, were you 15? Is that right? Yeah. And so, yeah. What, like, you must have been crap in it, really, in a way. I didn't have time to crap it, to be honest. No. I, I basically got kicked out of home, and I just had literally this kind of moment of awakening where everything that I'd known before was suddenly not there anymore. You know, I have three brothers, they're not around suddenly. Mm. I've got, of course, a mother and a father, suddenly that's not around. I've got no comprehension of paying bills or any of those things. And then suddenly, like a crash course in real life, I'm I'm learning how the world really works. And yeah. at 15 years old, I just walked, I went into like, um, imagine putting someone in the middle of, uh, the you know, a, 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 the Sahara or something and like, it's survive. It's run to water and die. Yeah, yeah. There is where, no where did you get that drive from then? When you was fifteen, how did you just like just ping? You know, yeah. I know what I'm gonna do. It, it's know? in us all. It's in us all, right? I think drive is a very, very interesting thing. I think it's in us all. And yeah, what but... happens sometimes is, if if you're a hunter and someone brings you food every day, you will forget to hunt. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course, yeah. You, you will lose the uh, hunger to hunt. Why would you go out there and get cold and mm. risk it, right? But when the food's gone, the first feeling is, I have an instinct here. I know it's there, yeah. right? Meant to hunt. And at first, you have no idea how to hunt. Mm. But instincts will kick in, and then you watch other people that are having to hunt, hunt. Next thing you know, you're hunting. You know what happened to me when I started hunting? I fucking loved it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I enjoy, yeah. I enjoy taking an idea from my head and making it real, creating my own meal. Mm. I didn't need my mother to cook me a meal and to blackmail me into acting a certain way to get a meal. Yeah, I could yeah. just be myself and create my own meal, and that meal never tasted better when I did it. Nice, but, mate. Well yeah. done. Yeah, yeah. Now I did overhear on one of your post, uh, your podcasts that. Um, was it the first, and this made me, I was like, well, like balls are still, mate, doing this. Was it you knocked on somebody's door with, um, uh, so you saw their lawn was messy or something like that? You knocked on their lawn, you said, like, can I mow your lawn or something? Yeah, do you, I don't know if, if you or any of your listeners have, have suddenly had like a realisation, you know, like, why has that not been done before, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, that kind of moment. And, and I had that, uh, I'd been homeless for five days, and I walked past this house in Cambridge, which is uh, where I grew up in England. And there was a big house with uh, a really messy garden. And my brain just kind of said, why does someone who has such a beautiful house yeah. have such a messy garden? It didn't make sense to me. So I thought, well, maybe they need someone to tidy up their garden for them. They clearly got money. It's a big house, they must have money. So I'll go offer to clean up their garden and just knocked on the door and some instinct kicked in me saying, hi, I'm Simon Squibb. I'm 15 years old. They must have laughed inside. But <laughs> I'm Simon Squibb. I've got a gardening company and I would like to take care of your garden for you. And 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 the guy kind of looked at me and, and I thought, because 15 year old me was very confident. I thought he just looked at me and went, you know, sure, this guy's got what it takes. Let's do it. I'm sure he didn't. I'm sure he looked at me and went, I'll give this poor sod a, 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 a chance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Said, sure. Um, how much do you charge? And I made up a number of 200 pounds at the time. I said, 200 pounds a month, and I'll, I'll make sure it stays in good condition. The guy was like, sure, let's do it. 
Nice. And, and that was it. And wow. I said, great, next week, walk, walked away, um, you know, not knowing anything else, just thinking, what? and as I walked away, I thought, this is just bloody amazing. I, I have really just earned 200 quid there. Yeah. Yeah. All I've got now is start, start the work every month, 200 quid from nothing. So, okay. Not so don't have a website, don't have a sales pitch, don't have a business plan, don't have anybody working for me, don't have any equipment, no idea about business, no co-founder. Let's yeah. fucking. Well, <laughs> this is why this this is a perfect scenario of how like I think a lot of people would argue. They'd be like, oh yeah, but this, and I bet you didn't have this, and this, and this. So, in my in my head, I can picture this. You've been on the streets for uh, five five days, okay? You see this you see this garden. You've not got a penny to scratch your ass with. All right, you knock on this door. Yeah, okay, you can start next week. Okay, I need at least a shovel or you know a rake. A lawnmower. What do you do with no money? No, no, like this is why I'm trying to get into your head as an entrepreneur. I was going, okay, That's... how do you think as opposed to everybody else? Yeah. Oh, I can't do it. I've got no tools. There's like I'd be like, I need shears. Am I going to get shears? Am I going to get a lawnmower? And it's, yeah, it's yeah, that yeah. defeatist mentality it, that yeah. people have. I think. I have, this, I have this conversation with people that I know can be entrepreneurs and don't realize it every single day. And sometimes, you know, in, in um, the, the Vikings used to call it burning the boats. Hmm. But basically, you get to an island and you want to conquer it, burn the boats, because you can't go back to your old life, burn the boats. And no the boat was burnt for me. Yeah. Brilliant. Right. Right. I had to make it work. So once I made that first realization and got that first client, I then had to get more than one client. Yeah. I knew I needed scale. So then I knocked on, I think about 100 plus doors that day. Well, yeah. And I, I remember the number that was more important is I remember getting 11 clients say yes. Nice. So That's that was 2,200 pounds a month. Right. Right. And so, and this is 25 odd plus years ago, a lot of money. And so yeah. I, um, and I went home, it was a Saturday, I remember it. I went home to this kind of squat thing I'd found myself in. And, uh, and I thought, wow, this is amazing. Don't have any equipment. What shall I do? And so uh, I had a brainwave to go back on the Sunday and I knocked on the 11 doors that said yes. And I said, thank you very much for confirming yesterday I'm going to be your gardening firm. Um, so here's what I'm going to do. And I gave a little contract or a piece of shitty paper with a list of things I was going to do. And I said, I need a 50% deposit. Um, and, and, and they gave me the cash, every nice. single one. Wow. Nice. I, took that, I took that money and I went and bought secondhand equipment. Um, and eBay didn't exist then. So I bought it basically all around. So I went and bought all this cheap equipment. Um, I rented a couple of things uh, from B&Q. And, you know, basically I got, I got enough to do the work. Um, and then the next problem came, I had the equipment now, the next problem came a week later when I started doing the work that I couldn't do the work. I wasn't capable of as a 15 year old. Oh, right, yeah. so, so basically I then had to go back to the squat I was working, living in and get all the uh, guys there that also desperately needed money to come and help me. Nice. Um, and within three months I had 18 people working for me, 40 <laughs> <laughs> yes, mate. And, and to be honest, it's it's not it's not that I'm a genius. I I, I say to people, it, it's sometimes you know the human race have one superpower that no no other no other animal has. Uh, we have a, a, a frontal cortex that allows us to predict the future, right? So we you know if a fish sees a hook, uh, it will it will always bite that hook if it's got food on it. But we have the ability to predict what could happen. Yeah, yeah. And, what happens sometimes when this part of the brain is overstimulated is fear kicks in. The more experience people have, the worse that gets. So they can't take risk the older they get. Okay. The brilliant, yeah, the brilliant yeah. thing of my life was that I had no choice to make money. I had to survive. I, I had no national insurance card because I was 15 years old. You need in England to get a job. So I couldn't get a job. No one would give me a job. The only places that jobs were available were like pubs. Can't go there. I'm 15. Mm -hmm. uh, wine shops. Or something. Can't go there. I'm 15. And I don't have my national school. Had to start a business. Brilliant for me. Didn't realize how amazing that lack of choice was. And then when I forward projected with my cortex what could happen, I didn't predict any of the things you just mentioned. So it didn't stop me doing it. Right. Yeah, yeah. Once I started doing it, it was just a step-by-step -step process. Mm. Everybody can start a business for nothing, absolutely nothing. But most people will say, I want to start a business. And the next line, they'll say, I need £10,000 to do it. And I'll say, no, you don't. Mm. You can go register your social media handles for free. You can ask a few potential clients if they buy off you for free. You can talk to some potential employees and see if they would join you and how much or what it's all about. Maybe one would join you and invest. 
for free, mm. right? And that process I learned through hardship. Mm. And, and that whole, like, you need a wonderful website and a wonderful brochure. And, you, you know, all of that is bullshit. That's what your frontal cortex tells you from experience you need based on the social media bullshit you consume, for example. Mm. And it's not true. It's all a step-by-step -step process. Everything is. I think the um, another, in my opinion, a vital thing to have as well, which I think uh, it snowballs, is the confidence. I think to have confidence as well, to actually open your mouth and speak to people and ask, I think goes a hell of a long way. You've got the confidence. Yeah. just Because if you don't ask, you don't get, right? Mm -hmm. But yeah, what, I was... what was your drive though, Simon? What was your drive like at 15? Did you... Was the driver you wanted you wanted money, or was the driver su survival, or did you uh, want to be successful? Okay, so I, I, I sometimes I have to kind of go back to that time to answer that question in a deep way, but um, I think it was a combination of ignorance, right. which was brilliant, yeah, really brilliant. I wish I wish I was more ignorant now. Sometimes I'm too, I know too much now. Sometimes it's annoying, mm. um, and uh, I think just sheer um hunger right you know like I, literal I, hunger <laughs> literal hunger literal hunger like yeah, I, I learned by the way you only need one meal a day yeah don't need three meals a day that's bullshit <laughs> mate i've been doing that the last week i've been having one meal a day and i feel great yeah you don't need it yeah yeah I, i'm back on two meals a day uh just because i like food so much um <laughs> Food's but it is, but as, yeah. as a general rule, I realise you only need one. Mm. But that one cannot be a shitty piece of toast. No, no, no. no. Right. So, yeah. so um, I, I basically uh, just literally, and I don't, I don't like to ask people for money. I don't like to ask for handouts. The English system, social service system, about two months into this business I was building, finally caught up with me and said, you should not be in this position you right. know you're 15 um we the social service system um will now kick in uh, and provide you with some accommodation and some monthly money you should be back in school right i told me to fuck off <laughs> yeah, at that point first of all it's not in my nature to take from anybody yeah right the government whoever it is um, but they put a bit of paper in front of me it was almost to them it was the legal requirement that i signed it in their minds yeah and i said look why would i i don't want i i have enough ability to see how many people have got caught in that very existence and and i don't uh i don't want to be in that situation where if i get a job i'm penalized by you're not paying my rent anymore yeah, and therefore yeah. I have a fucking job mm, yeah and more importantly at that point i have my own business and if I start taking your social money, you you don't want me to have any other income stream because somehow that's, you know, it's in their mind, you're taking from the social system and you're taking money from this company you're building. Yeah. So I took great pride in saying no to them. Although many people who I did talk to about it, like, you know, social services would give me money and accommodation. And like, like well, why wouldn't you do that? You can just sit at home playing Sega Mega Drive. It might show my age a bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good um, console, mate. Yeah, you, it was a good console. You, yeah. can sit home, you can sit at home with your mates playing that all day and yeah. and and I, and I remember having that debate with myself you know yeah I could just sit back playing computer games all day yeah. um pretending to I like school which I don't and and just sit back I don't have to go back to my mum so it ticks that box but I just knew that that was a trap yeah just like debt yeah. a trap that I was not going to fall into and thank god I told him to fuck off yeah. and and it wasn't the easy choice yeah but it was it was the hard choice. But I'm so glad I went through the hard stuff early, so that I came out the other side with this like you know amazing life I ended up having. Well, I funny you should say that about debt because I um, <clears throat> I read this book called Rich Dad Poor Dad. Have you heard of that book? Of course, probably have. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and he was he was actually saying in there about using debt to make money, and I think you're against that, right? Or you don't? <laughs> maybe it's an old school way of thinking. No, uh, it's a super intellectual way of thinking. Um, uh, the author is, 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 is a very clever guy. Robert uh, Kawasaki. Kawasaki. Yeah. Yeah. He's morally corrupt and he, uh, he, he, he believes money is, is the most important thing in the world. Mm. And, and I, I don't. No. 
And so I, 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 I love money. I've made a lot of money. And, and I believe people can make a lot of money without having to leverage debt. Now, what he, what he talks about uh, is a very complicated subject. There's a whole book, of course, on it. But the bottom line is that people perceive um, there's two types of debt, right? There's bad debt. Mm. Let's call it debt, debt that doesn't generate you any income. Yeah. And then there's good debt, which is, you know, you, you use other people's money to make you money. But in reality, right, and I see this in a lot of people that I know, good debt kills them just as much as bad debt does. Right. right? And, and they're, 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 let's say, for example, the easiest analogy would be they own a thousand properties through good debt. And let's say those thousand properties, the headline is they're worth 20 million, but they have 15 million in debt. Right. right? So they've made 5 million, right? The most miserable people you'll ever meet. Mm. And, and so every single day they're managing some property nightmare or the fence has fallen down, washing machine doesn't work, or they've got people working for them that are dealing with those things that having days off sick and they're stressed having to fill in for them. Basically, they've got this whole life built around this perceived net worth that is a miserable piece of uninteresting shit. Yeah. Mm. And they're not doing what they were meant to be doing, which may have been um, building a water pipeline in Africa to give clean water to people there, uh, which might not have made them millions, but would have fulfilled them and made them happy. And they would have found someone out there that had the same moral code as them and live an incredibly happy existence in a mud hut, perhaps. Um, and and, and that, that is a better life. Mm. Uh, some guy rushing around fixing everyone's washing machines, uh, but his net worth is five million. Fuck that. <laughs> and so I'm not saying you can't make money many different ways. Uh, I'm saying I think that, um, you know, th there are some elements of, of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, which I like. Yeah. Which, which, you know, there is element of like, he, he says, if you own your home, then uh, that's a liability, not an asset, which is true, technically. <laughs> Sorry, Simon. Me and him had arguments about this because <laughs> I say it, 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 he says what well, you say. It's an investment. I say it's not. A, it's not an investment. It's not an investment. No, because you're spending money to keep it. You know, um, and, and you, uh, well, I, I, I suppose in in my opinion, the only way a house is what you call an asset is if you bought a house to do it up to sell it. Yeah, or or you rent it out. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, but even then which I think you know, is the definition of a good debt investment, it's not necessarily what you're meant to be spending your time on. And there's plenty of ways to make money. I was talking so, about that. I was talking about that at work today with this contractor on site. What? Actually, about, about about buying, an a, buying another property and renting it out. And he's done it. And he was like, mate, I'm telling you, don't do it. Really? It's a pain in the ass. There's a people. Yeah, he, but he didn't go and in, inspect the property right. on a regular basis. So mm. by the time he got to it, was in a shit state. Ended yeah, but up don't cost you, him loads of money. Yeah, but you can arrange monthly sort of viewings with your. Yeah, you can, but he was managing it himself. Oh, you know, okay, so okay. Um, rather. But there's so it. many people that will sell that dream. They, they, you know, mm. and, and and I feel like. But is it a good move? Like to me, an Airbnb is the other thing as well. You know, people are well, making again, a lot of money. You know, like, again, make a lot of money, which which I think this is where people go wrong, and I think this is why I'm a millionaire, because I never once chase money. Mm. Everything I've ever done, I ended up having a purpose in the business that made me want to do it. Mm. And that made me mean sometimes, some months, I lost money in business because I cared about reputation. I cared about doing things right. I wanted to sleep well at night. You know, and those things matter more than I made an extra million. Yeah. You know, and I feel like that's not talked about enough yeah. in in, in business, it's all about how to make money mm. and how to make money faster and how to, you know, compound and bad debt and good debt and all that shit. And what's not talked about enough is how you make your money is more important than how much money you make. Right. Mm. Because I've, I've, I also have noticed as well over the years um, that there's more and more people nowadays that are driving to be their own boss to try that self-employment, to do something other than the nine to five. Why do you think that is? I, well, I, in my opinion, I think it's because people in now, like the retail, for example, you know, they're just, it's impossible. It's just so difficult for people, people nowadays because system, you're working your ass off just to pay the bills, to go back to work, to pay the bills. And, you know, people, and that's what happened to me, Simon, you know, and I sort of, I never used to be driven. I, I would actually call myself a driven person now. 
And it was only till I think I had like this midlife crisis. Um, uh, I was. Oh, you're forty. Oh, yeah. <laughs> forty is older than that. <laughs> so I was, you know, I I flunked in school. You know, I was all I wanted to do is make people laugh. Um, you know, and just act around like a class clown. Um, and then I was just in retail jobs and then later on in life I got to management and that and I thought that was a great achievement for me you know when considering most of my friends most of my probably my family thought he's never going to make anything of himself but um I started getting these palpitations and stuff like almost like uh, anxiety attacks like the time's running out I don't want this to be my life I have you know I've got a son I've got a daughter a wife and what I did I was a I was a branch manager at Screwfix uh, for 10 years and um, on the five years into that, I was like, no, this is, this is not good for me. I need to do something. There's something more in life. So I did Amazon. Uh, I did eBay. I did Twitch live streaming. I did YouTube. Um, anything I could to try to get some perpetual money coming in. Where, uh, and the YouTube just for me just ticked loads of you know, boxes because I'm a big show off. Like to be on the camera and I love playing games. So I thought if I could be a YouTuber, and that's how I started. And thankfully it kicked off and this is where I am now. But now because I've tasted that little bit of success, it's driving me to say, actually, yeah, you're right, Simon. Anyone can do it. Because I feel like I'm like, you know, advocate of that. That yeah, I was a complete bum back in school. Couldn't couldn't be bothered with it, you know? And um, yeah, there is there is hope. It's mindset, mate. If you've got that mindset to say it's going to fucking happen, it's going to happen, mm, you know? Absolutely. And I, it took you a long time. Yeah. And, and that, you carried on, you never quit. Yeah. You know? And that's what, that's the mindset that you need. Yeah. And, and it's so difficult these days because everything, well, I think, yeah. So you, I, think, I think one of the issues is um, the school system is broken. Oh, yeah. Uh, the school system. School system is over years. Oh, it's shit, yeah. It's a global problem, yeah. not just a youth problem. The education system, it, it actually makes me a little bit angry. I've got to be a little bit careful here, mate. Cause... Why? Because <laughs> my wife. Oh, shit, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. As a teacher? Yeah, yeah. I have so much respect for teachers. It's not teachers' fault. No, I know it's not. Um, in fact, the teachers in my school, the only thing I liked about my school. They are amazing. The mate. system amazing. the teacher had to work Hearts on. Gold. Yeah, m most teachers are literally working for next to nothing to help the exact people I'm talking about. The system is letting them down. On. Yeah. It's totally the system, the whole model, I, have, I actually haven't met a teacher who doesn't think the education system is broken and needs a fix. No, right? no, it's ridiculous. So, the teachers are definitely not the problem. The problem is basically the hierarchy of of of, of needs, right? So the, the way it works, we all know the school system, but the way it works is that whole system was designed to really make motivated Ford factory workers that could afford to buy a Ford car and go on holiday and drive that car, but will come back to the factory yeah. because they don't know anything else. Mm -hmm. It's 50 right? you don't teach day, you've never been updated. That's cool. You don't teach financial literacy because you don't want them to realize that buying a car is pointless. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. You don't want to teach how to build a brand because you want them to work for Ford. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So, so the whole school system is designed, and I was part of that, so I know, to trap you into thinking. I did this, they just think there's jobs you could do, yeah? Like, there's a job that, center in the UK. Yeah, Where's yeah. the fucking startup center? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah? And, and so it, it's just all designed to get you a job. Yeah. Fuck that. Yeah. And yeah. people are to waking keep you up in the to system. It. To keep you in that yeah. system, isn't it? Totally. And, and I and I and people say, oh, this everyone's calling themselves an entrepreneur now. Good. Mm. You know, good. And everyone that, should be. Is that should not you're... be holding someone else's dream, someone else's day. I tell the people that work for me, don't work for me, work for yourself. Mm. Now there is exceptions where people believe in your purpose, which is why I think purpose is important. I say people don't work for me, they work for my purpose, right? So I don't manage people, I manage purpose, right? And so that's different in my mind. People choose to help you with your purpose, yeah? yeah. They're not working for me. But but working for someone else is a mistake, right? Yeah. You're selling time, not buying time when you do that. And, and school teaches you that it's risky to work for yourself, but it's yeah. not risky to go work for some fuck-ass company doing something God only knows what, they might change their mind tomorrow, and you're not in charge. I I... I have to stop you there. I mean, I, I personally, 
that, that that's my view okay because i i felt like i'm sick of working my ass off for other people to make money yeah that's what i thought um but there's gonna there's gonna be a lot of people out there simon to say hang on a second i'm quite happy with my nine to five i like to know that i can get up to work not many well no but there are still quite people that are quite contempt to saying i like my job yeah. i like what i do i like go i know i know where i am mm. i don't need you know extravagant holidays and all this you know, what, what do you say to what do you say to that side i say that they have not experienced the full matrix yet mm. so um i mean you can argue it's the concept of like ignorance is bliss yeah right but i don't think that means you should be ignorant what I have noticed is those people that say that have not seen the world. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And they've, they've suppressed their natural purpose. And that is a shame for the universe, you know, about getting mystical about it. Yeah. Because the, what happens is they, and I see it in a lot of people, they, they, they kill their ambition. They, they stop being a kid. They, they, they no longer dream because mm. they think it's not possible. Someone's told them it's not possible. It's and so, um, there are there are exceptions, and I think it links to purpose. I'm going to say, like a nurse, for example, often their purpose is to help people, so that a hospital and that structure gives them the ability to do that. I, 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 I that that is different to my mind. That that is you serving your purpose. You've discovered what you love to do, and you're doing it. But I think you know that's when nurses should be paid more. That's a whole different different story. Yeah. But, but I feel I feel like generally. 90% of people I meet are not happy in their job mm. and slowly to accept that shit job they've got, they, um, they, they give up on the ambitious things or these, the potential ambitious things and they shut these things off. And it's a shame because they're meant to do something big. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. I think a lot of people are afraid to take that risk because I always say, don't I high risk, high reward, you know, uh, sometimes I think in life, you just got to take that risk and to, that, that plunge to say, do you know what? Sod it. Yeah. I love and the education again i blame it you know the education system of our previous generation too they they it's almost like a brainwash like people believe owning property is an asset we're brainwashed you know because why because got banks want to lend you money to buy a house so they they've done a really good job on the marketing mm. and people think well i've got a job i've got no stress i just you have got stress plus you're missing out on life and you've only got one life yeah. it's very short. but the other option of not buying a house is either rental or buying it outright you're using your frontal lobe now. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, so you're saying, so I don't know, let's say, um, uh, some, I'm getting a bit of, um, uh, uh, on my TikTok now, a few comments. I've just looked. <laughs> um, but they're going crazy, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. So, 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 but I think, I think, uh, I think basically what, 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 the, what the issue is sometimes is people's, let's say rent versus mortgage is what you're saying, yeah? Yeah. That's, that's, not, that's not the equation. Right. right. If you don't, if you don't, like Elon Musk owns no home. Yeah. Yeah. Right? I know, yeah. And, and he lives. He owns Twitter, based... <laughs> <laughs> So you think about it. He put, he spent 44 billion on Twitter. How many properties do you think he could buy? Oh, Jesus. Yeah. I don't know. See what I mean? So, so, he, doesn't so own a, he doesn't own his own home. No, no he doesn't. No, he, he sleeps around his mates' houses and stuff. Really? And this is what yeah. you realize. He said, this is what you realize. Uh, this is what I've realized when I become wealthy um i didn't realize i already had this philosophy to get wealthy because you need this philosophy to get wealthy but i didn't know this until i was wealthy that none of this shit matters this is all consumer bullshit right you've got I, to live somewhere Simon. you know okay yeah you gotta live when somewhere got a family you know you've got to yeah live somewhere yeah so um I, I just just a hypothetical right you buy a camper van I've got and one. You, I've got one on the drive, mate. <laughs> yeah, you got one on the drive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So sell the fucking house, yeah. go in the camper van, and see the world. Yeah, and yeah. Have on the but you would van. love to do that. Yeah, yeah, but, but then uh, my uh, kids have uh, got to go to school. You know, no, there's no, always no. there's always something in the back of my mind that's going to stop me doing system, that. Though that's the system, thing. System has trapped you. Yeah, I know it has. But on ninety percent of the population is trapped, don't they? You know, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. it's. I think from an early age, I wish I could have this conversation 20 years ago. No, then, no, no time like the present. Yeah, I know, but it's easier. How old, how old are your children? 12 and 9. But it's, it's easier when you haven't got a mortgage, when you haven't got kids in school, mm. you know? 
Yeah, I'm gonna dog. Like a free spirit. <laughs> but um, you actually, uh, your YouTube channel is actually dedicated to. Have you, what, you've given yourself 700 days or something to um, build up businesses for people, or I, I can't. A little bit of clickbait. Um, and it's uh, in 700 days, I'm building a billion dollar company. Is that a so, purposeful, purposeful project? Yes, the purposeful yeah. project. Yeah, yeah. So, what I find is a lot of people will give advice on business. One, they've never done it. And I have done it. I built 18 companies. Um, but, you know, people will give advice on business. But I, I find it a, quite an interesting idea to actually show people by doing it. Yeah. So, I've, I've, I've built hundreds of millions of company, but I haven't built a billion dollar company. So, I thought it would be interesting to, to do that. And so, but one of the things about it for me, it's about my, my idea around this is I'm building a billion dollar company that my community will own. Right. And so, so it, it's not about me owning a billion dollar company, which, which is one thing, mm. but it's about, about building something together and sharing the experience of building in that, in that journey. Because every single business I've built, I, I, I have a whole new set of experiences and a whole new set of potential advice based on that experience. And so I, I thought that this time I would build something in public and share the process with people and, and the learnings and, and how some things will always be the same, like a trademark of your business, for example. That will not change because that is an important part of building a business. Mm. People don't do. Yeah. All the way through to more, you know, the more update stuff like web free and decentralization and NFTs and cryptocurrency and metaverse and how that all plays a part in building a business today. So it's kind of the new world and what we're heading into and what we've learned from the past is still relevant type type gig. But yeah, I'm building a billion dollar company in the next 700 days. Excellent. Excellent. Just one, uh, just one <clears throat> company or yeah, well, it is a billion dollar company. Yeah. Right. yeah but just... I, no, I, <laughs> I thought yeah. on the purposeful project, I'm probably naive, I'm probably wrong, but I thought it, you were trying to build 10,000. So the mission of the business is yeah. to help a million people start yeah, and grow. Okay. That's the mission of the business. Right. But my, um, I guess my uh, way of displaying what we're actually doing at the purposeful project is we're building a billion dollar company that helps 10 million people start and grow a business for free. Oh, right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And your, so it, your YouTube channel is called just Simon Squibb, right? Well, I've got right two. Yeah, the, the my personal one is Simon Squibb. Oh, okay. So, how do people get onto that program? You can just that? go to my website, SimonSquibb.com. Yeah, I've look, we've looked at that. It's yeah, flashy, but... flashy website you got there. Yeah. Nice. I, uh, I'm a millionaire. You know what do you expect? <laughs> <laughs> one thing I wanted to ask you as well. What's your What's your theory? Because also, I can see you've got a virtual reality headset at the back there. That's exactly where. Um, my YouTube channel started out originally as a virtual reality and, you know, playing games and that. What's your thoughts on the metaverse? So it's very split, I, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I, I always look at it from an entrepreneurial point of view. I think that, um, like anything, it has the potential to be complete bullshit and it has the potential to be game-changing. Mm. I think it's like that even now. You know, there's some things on the internet. You're like, oh my god, this is so awful, and I think so it's really scary. If that if that hap if that happens, like the social media scene becomes a VR reality. Like, yeah, but it's, it's already and... scary. If you went back, yeah, I tell you, I walked yeah, it is. Today, every single person I looked at was looking at their phone. Yeah, everyone does yeah. now. Don't they? Everyone's glued to it. Right. If you go back 20 years ago and you showed that image in a video, you'd be like, this is the future. Human zombies. Yeah. <laughs> It's you know, like literally, I, I walk past my wife and we fell in love walking past each other. Yeah. Now we'd both be on the fucking phone. Yeah, you'd miss each other. <laughs> <laughs> we, wouldn't even, we wouldn't have the amazing life we've had together. It is, it is scary. It is. Something else on Tinder. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, like it it's, um, and, and, but I, I also think that, you know, you can't, you've got to embrace the future. Yeah. You know, and, and I think like metaverse for me, it's like, it has its strengths and its weaknesses. Some of it is bullshit. Some of it's definitely the future. But, you know, you have to embrace the future and be in the arena to make a difference. Yeah. So I'm all in on metaverse stuff. You are, yeah? I am. What are you, what are you, uh, what are you playing at the moment on the virtual reality? Then? So I'm building a product called Entrepreneur House, which okay. is basically uh, a place where people can come for free and stay 
and get help with their business. And then we will get that on Netflix and broadcast it. And then a big part of it will be inside the metaverse. No way. Hey, that's a good idea, right? I know. <laughs> He's got some good ideas. Yeah, yeah. Are you, what, what about your crypto? Are you into crypto or anything like that? So I'm always cautious on this point just because um, short answer is yes, but I don't want people to go and buy crypto. Right. I don't want to encourage people to go and buy crypto. It's massively. So I'm not saying go and buy crypto. The money in the gold rush was made by people selling the shovels. Yeah, yeah. So I, I say to people, you know, if you want to do crypto, it's gambling. Accept it. You buy crypto, it's gambling. You can influence it almost zero unless you're Elon Musk. You cannot influence it. So better to invest in the crypto ecosystem around things that you can influence. So, for example, if you built a house in the metaverse and you have people go there and then they sponsor and be a part of it, that you can influence all of that, yeah. right? And I'm part of the crypto world if I do it. Right. I'm not fucking buying bitcoin and keeping my fingers crossed and then trying to call myself an entrepreneur no. yeah. if it goes yeah, yeah i think it's it, it it's a risky game i've i've put a little bit of money into it but it is a risky game you know everyone's um, had a little play with it they? dream yeah. about being a millionaire from crypto yeah but no chance mate. it's a little bit of like jump on the bandwagon but yeah. you know um I, i've got a feeling i look at it as an education you know take one percent of your net wealth mm -hmm and buy a, a .eth domain name and buy yourself one crypto that's worth nothing right now and hope and, and play around, you know, like learn. I, I just use it as an education. Invest in yourself as an education, but don't buy into these things. That's why I don't like stocks and shares as well. Like you buy into someone else's company and then keep your fingers crossed that they make you rich. Yeah. Take control of your own destiny. Don't Don't hope someone else will make it work for you. Yeah, yeah. Because I noticed actually that um, you said on Twitter uh, about how many don don name, uh, domain names have you bought recently. What, can you explain and shed some light on that? Yeah, no. So um, I, uh, about 15 years ago, uh, someone bought my company website address and then blackmailed me to, to give it to me. Okay. So from that moment onwards, I've been obsessed with buying uh, my website addresses so that people can't blackmail me. And that's led me to also buy um, domain names. You know, at one point, like I was in Hong Kong and they suddenly released a .hk domain name. So it wasn't a .com. Yeah, it was yeah. .hk. So I bought candles.hk and I bought printing.hk and I, I, I bought all sorts of things. And some of them I gave to friends, like my friend who had a candle company. Yeah. I gave him candles.hk as a gift. Nice. And, and others I turned into businesses. And so... Um, but I've, I've been just, I just enjoy, you can buy a website address and suddenly feel like you've got the beginnings of a business, right? Yeah, yeah. So I actually bought, uh, uh, I bought entrepreneurhouse.com today. Um, I, I, I paid a lot of money for it. And, and I, um, you know, it's kind of exciting because it also brings some sort of legitimacy to your dream that you've mm. got in your yeah, house. Yeah, that little stamp. So, yeah. Yeah, good. yeah, so before that, I had entrepreneurhouse.live. Uh, and so, you know, it's not quite as, it's not exciting as a dot-com, mm. right? It's like a dot-com and it's just one more level of credibility to your idea, one more level up in, in the economic moat for people to copy you. And, and it just feels like progressions. And, and I bought over 250 domain names under that kind of premise because yeah. there's also a whole thing about SEO, right? If you've got entrepreneurhouse.live and you've got entrepreneurhouse.com, dot uk whatever dot co dot uk then you you begin to build up you know a, an seo system too so that so it's just it's like it's my idea of a hobby is it's people maybe have um collect stamps yeah um I, I enjoy buying these things and, and playing around with it which is probably why now GoDaddy is one of our big partners and sponsors oh um, really oh yeah, wow. yeah they sponsor our uh, our podcast and they they are partner with with me uh, to help entrepreneurs start businesses and I think it's because they've probably seen how many uh, website addresses I've bought. Yeah, you're yeah, keeping, yeah. You're keeping them afloat, mate. <laughs> so what's, what's your uh, podcast name, Simon? So I have two po podcasts. One is called the Unicorn Podcast, uh -huh. where I interview billion-dollar founders, and they tell us how they went from zero to a billion. Wow. And oh, so nice. the Unicorn Podcast. I just had Anne Bowden, who started Starling Bank, on um, the guy who founded Shazam and yeah. how he did sold it to Apple, first massive acquisition for Apple. Oh, and, and, and then I have something called Pep Talk, 
which is just a 20 minute podcast with an expert who shares their deep knowledge on a subject like marketing, for example. I've watched a couple of your pep talks. I did that yeah. yesterday. Yeah, I watched a few of those. Oh, great. Yeah. No, so no, just useful bit, snippets of insight into entrepreneurial life and, and, and a bit of knowledge, hopefully, uh, that helps people start a business or, or grow their present one. I get the impression you live and breathe this, right? Is there ever going to get to a point where you just go, enough's enough. I want to just do nothing now. <laughs> you know? I did that three years ago. Oh, did you? I retired, I retired at 40. Did you? You, look, uh, you can't I, be over 40, can you? <laughs> yeah, I'm a little bit over 40. And so I retired and uh, I had a baby. Well, my wife did. I supervised. And uh, I was a full-time father for two years. Um, absolutely amazing. Can't get that time back. So having those, you know, those two years every single day with my son, just absolutely magical. Yeah. Um, but I, I like working. Yeah. I like, I like being a productive part of society. I like helping brain people. going, doesn't it? Exactly. And, and so, uh, I got, I, I, it was a bit of, um, a both, uh, I look back at, with fond memories of those two years with my son, but also I, 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 I went a bit mad, really. You know, I, I had too much time and all my, my friends, people are, you know, they're all working. Yeah. So it's yeah. like, Hey, let's, let's, let's go to the spa for the day. And I'm like, we're working Simon. Like, let's go play golf for the day. We're working. <laughs> um, so I'm a bit young for it. It's what, and, and, and also I felt like um, when the pandemic hit, I, mm. I, could, I could help. Yeah. So I, I went well, hats off to you, Simon, for doing that, mate. Cause like, you know, a lot of people out there would be, do you know what? I've got the money, I've got all the businesses, I've got all the connections, whatever, you know, you, if you want to go out there and be, be, you know, get to the place where I am, you go and do it yourself. But you're actually actively going out there and, and helping people and like for free, you know, with your TikTok and your YouTube. It's yeah. amazing. Man. Yeah, it's really nice. You know, there should be more people like that. Absolutely. Everybody's trying to sell you the millionaire dream, but yeah. they want you to buy their fucking ebook. You know, you know what I mean? This is why I went the other way, and I, I, I told my team this every single day. We will never charge people for help. Very important. We can never, because that's what everyone else is doing. They're mm. promising people, uh, you know, like you say, the entrepreneurial millionaire bullshit, and then they just sell them a course or sell them some piece of crap. And and I don't want to be, I don't want to be doing that. I want to be giving people help with no catch. The advice is more pure that way too. The support is more pure because there's no agenda to give you just enough that you buy my course it's literally like just what do you need we will provide it and it as i say it's in my mind i'm going back to that 15 year old me and helping yeah but i'm also yeah. going back to the you know the five to 15 year old at school who didn't get the fucking help that they should have got you know school is free but in a way it hinders you mm, and so yeah. i wanted to provide something that helps people have a better life and i absolutely love that we have no agenda and and it's really core to what we do at the purposeful project and you said, I'm just, uh, we're going to probably wrap it up now because I've taken a lot of your time and time is money. Um, but just, I'm interested in the, the, the places you said you've lived uh, and, and, and visited. What's, you know, what's the nicest place you've, uh, you've been to, you'd like to go back again, you've lived in? Oh, so many amazing experiences I've had. So many. I'm so lucky. Um, by the way, uh, money is not time. Um, time is far more valuable than money. Yeah? Mm. But, uh, but the, um, the, 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 I've, I, my, my, my diff the different place I've, I've lived. And by the way, this is one of the weaknesses of making too much money, um, is that you end up liking bits of everywhere and it's very hard to settle and be happy. Right. So I, I, I absolutely love Hong Kong, mm. uh, but I absolutely love London. Uh, and I absolutely love Bali. I've spent a lot of time in all of these places. And it's very hard to be happy in one place because you always crave what you don't have. I was going to say, that's from one spectrum to the other, Bali and London. I know, that's what I mean. Yeah, so yeah. I love the culture of London. I love the hustle. I love what can get done. Um, but, you you know, it's not sunny every day and you can't surf. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, you're a surfer? surfer. No. Oh, come uh, on, man. Come, come to Newquay. Come down. Well, I'll take yeah, you okay. surfing. Yeah, we will. We'll yeah, right. yeah, yeah. So I, I, I can surf. I wouldn't say I'm a surfer. Um, well, the other right. thing, the other thing I would say is, um, Nuke is fucking cold. Shut yeah. up, it's, it's not, lovely mate. In the it's, summer. Yeah. You've not oh, been in the summer. Like, time like, of year. September. Yeah. September, mate. It's when you want to. Right. So 28th of July to the 15th of September, right? Something like that. It's nice. Yeah. But I feel like, um, it, it, Bali is nice all year round. And I guess what I'm saying when you ask me the question like places to go, it's like, I, I, I love all of these different places for different reasons. I loved San Francisco. Mm. Um, I 
Napa Valley. I almost bought a house there um, not so long ago. I, I absolutely love uh, New Zealand. Got family there. That's a big reason why I love it too. Um, it's it, the the world is just so fucking fascinating. Yeah, yeah. So many interesting places, and I try not to get into a rut on any of them. Yeah. And experience them all the time. Even places where you think, oh, like I opened up an office in uh, Nairobi, you know, in Africa, and people think, oh, that 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 is that an awful place. You talk to people in England or London about Nairobi. They're like, was it a dump? like amazing yeah it's an experience again you know it's a cultural experience there's a lot of entrepreneurial hustle that's an up-and-coming part of the world um a lot of because it's a develop developing country they're kind of leapfrogging you know there's no roads so entrepreneurs are building whole new ways to get electric cars around you know like they're not relying on governments infrastructure is being built banks for example are being built by new startups, not by banks, because banks aren't trusted. Because then, so that it's just a very interesting ecosystem. Right. And I feel like a lot of people have perceptions about places. They've only spent two weeks there on holiday, or and they've come back and got a perception of that place yeah. based on some interaction, or, or, or they have never been there uh, and never experienced it, and therefore um, are missing out and don't know. So I, 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 I love, I love London. Um, Entrepreneur House is uh, the product I'm working on now is actually in Tunbridge Wells, um, oh, okay. which is 15 minutes from London Bridge. I mean, enjoying experiencing the country. Um, <laughs> as soon as Hong Kong gets its act together, I'll be out in Hong Kong again, um, enjoying dim sum on top of the peak, which overlooks the whole city. So everything, everything um, in the world has some appeal to me, frankly. Yeah. Well, Simon, mate, I really appreciate the the, the insight of your life and opening up a bit as well. I mean, it's, it's amazing, isn't it? I could talk for hours. I, I, to be honest with you, I, I could. so many yeah, questions. Because man. like, you know, what you've actually accomplished in such, I would say a short time, you know, you're saying I've got this over here and this in this country, this, these multiple businesses. It's like, you know, sometimes it takes people a lifetime to achieve one, you know, one business. And you must have, you must have such a, um, uh, a focused mind when it comes to what you want. And also, I would probably imagine as well that you've got a damn good team around you to get things in order. Yeah. 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 And, um, um, and without that team, and this is the thing, no, no, nobody uh, is self-made. Uh, people say self-made millionaire. And I think I've said it a few times. I say it tongue in cheek because no one gets here on their own. No one. We all need help. And the strongest people ask for help. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, I mean, it's, um, yeah, it is, it is an amazing journey, but, but we all need a bit of help, right? Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. Definitely, yeah. Definitely. And um, is there any other uh, any other links or anything you want to sort of plug before we say goodbye? No, if anyone wants any help, if you're an entrepreneur and you want to you want help with your business or you're, you're, you're starting a business and you want a community to support you, then just vi visit the purposefulproject.com. There's loads of resources there and we have a community there that can support you. We call it Entrepreneurs Helping Entrepreneurs. And if I can personally help you, uh, you can connect to me and my team through simonsquib.com. Excellent. And I tell you what, if you are in Cornwall, yeah, sometime it'd be great to have you in here to have another little chat, eh? and we could go for a surf. My son was making me look at the map yesterday of um, the train to Penzance. Oh, okay. Because I don't know how far away that is from oh, you guys. Oh, right. Penzance, forty minutes. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's my son is obsessed with trains at the moment. He's four and a half. It's like let's oh, go on that. Train. Yeah, do it. Oh, There's one the that runs all the way across the coastline, isn't there? Yeah, oh, the sea through yeah. the little tunnel, and that's really nice. Oh yeah, you right. love it. Yeah. And yeah. also, I st I noticed that you're um, friends with uh, Gordon Ramsay, and he lives in Rock, so uh, maybe. <laughs> yeah, well, um, the uh, I was in Cornwall for a month last year. Oh okay. Uh, and I, uh, I I I absolutely love it. Yeah, it's a uh, really beautiful place. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, look, enjoy your evening, mate. Thanks a lot, Simon. Thanks, Simon. Take Bye. care. It's been great. Cheers. Bye, guys.